Hello, this is Dr. Gay from First Lick MRI. And this is a patient who's had shoulder pain for six months. And they come in for an MRI, and most things look pretty good, but there is one main finding, which is over here. There's an area of bright signal. It's along the outer margin of the superior glenoid and deep to the, or beneath the supraspinatus muscle belly here. This is in the splenoglenoid notch, splenoglenoid notch. So when we see something here, we want to put up the fluid signal intensity sequence like this to see is this fat or fluid, and we see that here's fat suppressed. This did not, so definitely fluid, and that's what we would expect in the spinal gluteal notch. Typically, you get fluid collections here. And the next question is, since this is a fluid collection, this lobulated, uh, what is it? So the two main things we think of in the spinal gluteal notch, number one is a paralabral cyst. Usually, they come off the superior labrum or posterior superior labrum, and typically, you see a well-defined tear, and you see a little bit of fluid going from the tear off into it. In this case, we don't see a really well-defined tear. You don't really see fluid definitely communicating. But if I go to the anterior superior labrum, it looks good. Here's the 12 o'clock position of the superior labrum. I see this bright signal, probably interposition of hyaline cartilage. You could argue that it's not super well-defined, so it could be a little tear. And one more cut posterior. This is very suspicious for a tear right at the periosteal interface. You see that vertical band of bright signal. Again, the Bright signal goes all along the articular surface, it even goes up here. So this could be hyaline cartilage. We call it interposition of hyaline cartilage. But it does look a little funny there, and it's not very um, symmetric from front to back. Here it's nice and well-defined towards the front. Here it's foggy, and right here it looks vertical. So I believe this is probably a, a very small tear of the posterior aspect of the superior labrum and probably serving as the etiology for this cyst, so probably a paralabral cyst. But uh, this is one of those rare cases where you struggle and say, well, I don't see the clear communication. This is not 100% sure a labral tear, though it, may, it probably is. So we have to hedge and say, okay, this is probably a paralabral cyst, probably coming from an occult labral tear, or a tear that we don't see very well. Maybe it's scarred down and we just don't see the tear very well. We don't see the communication very well. That's probably what it is. And the other thing is, could it be a ganglion cyst in the spinal glenoid notch? And so I think this is an appropriate case to hedge, say it could be either. If we move towards the labrum on this, this is about at the level of the labrum. If we move one cut away, we do see this vertical band of brightness here. It probably is part of a paralabral cyst, but again, very difficult to tell. Now, the last thing is to mention whether or not there's any suprascapular nerve compression. Anytime there's something in the spinal glenoid notch, we know the nerve goes through there called the suprascapular nerve, and that innervates two muscles, the supraspinatus, infraspinatus, these two muscles are innervated by that nerve that courses through there, and we look for edema or atrophy. So this looks perfect. This looks perfect. There's no edema, no atrophy. So we'd say there's this lobulated thing here, probably a paralabral cyst, although it could be a ganglion cyst of the spinal glenoid notch. It has a little bit of mass effect on the muscles, but there's no evidence of muscle edema or atrophy to indicate suprascapular nerve, you know, significant nerve compression. And that's it. Uh, so thank you very much.